welcome to the second in our series, uh, Christian Power 201. Uh, thanks for coming back. Uh, hope this is of help to you. Let's do a little uh, kind of review. Uh, we've been looking at what Christianity is from the book of Romans, Paul. Uh, Romans uh, chapter 1, Paul says, everybody can know there's a God just by looking outside, seeing the beauty and how well this universe works. Uh, but we don't listen, we ignore God, we reject him, and so we mess up our lives, we mess up the world. Then in Romans chapter 2, he says everybody can know there's a God by the fact that all people tend to judge other people. This is a worldwide phenomenon. You, uh, you see something happen, you say, why'd you do that? Well, where did you get this sense of that's wrong and something else is right? Well, God, Paul says in Romans, that God has uh, written his law on everybody's heart. So we all know the difference between right and wrong. Where'd that come from? It wouldn't make any sense unless there's a God behind it uh, to whom we must give an account someday. Uh, then Romans 2, verse 17, he talks about religious people. These were the Jews. They had the Old Testament, God's law, the Ten Commandments. But he says even they don't get right with God. They don't keep the law. Uh, and so, and then in chapter, uh, Romans 3, chapter, uh, verse 9, uh, he starts his uh, great section that ends with Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we all sin, we all fall short of God's standards. And then in verse uh, 21, uh, Paul starts of Romans chapter 3, but now, and then he introduces the gospel, the truth that God loves us that God sent his son to die for us, that God is gracious to us. And then in the next couple chapters, uh, Romans 4 and 5, the whole good news of Jesus Christ. So uh, chapter 6, well, let me ask you a question before we do that. I want you to talk to somebody in your group. Um, if the law, we can't be saved by keeping the law, we can only be saved by grace, then why did God give us the law? Why did God give us the Ten Commandments? Why did God give us the Old Testament? Uh, turn to somebody and, and discuss that. All right, so the answer to that question is in Romans 7, verse 7. Uh, what shall we say then? Is the law sinful? You know, why do we need the law? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, you shall not covet. So why did God give us the law? It wasn't to save us. It wasn't something we could obey and then earn our way into his favor. It was to let us know what sin is. It's, uh, he's written his law in all of our hearts. We know right from wrong, but the law really makes it clear. So now we have a written uh, code from God. All right, so now let's turn to, if you have your Bible, let's go to Romans chapter 6, which is our, uh, our study uh, today. And I want to read just a few verses. So Romans chapter 6, verse 3, or don't you know that all, now Paul's talking about, okay, so now you have come, come to faith in Christ. Now, how do you live? And so, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So our life of sin was buried with Christ, is Paul's point. Then verse 11 and 12, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So he's talking about, all right, how do you live this life of discipleship now? Count yourself dead to sin. If, if you died with Christ to your sin, then count yourself dead to sin. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Don't let sin reign in your life. Uh, then verse 14, for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. So if you die to sin, you don't have to let sin be your master anymore. You don't have to be a slave to it. Then verse 18 of Romans chapter 6, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Uh, so we're set free from sin, but now we're going to be slaves to Christ. 
uh, to doing good. And then the last one is verse 22, Romans 6. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. All right, so, uh, so Paul talks about, you know, all this, uh, we're dead to sin, we're alive to Christ and the resurrection. Then in Romans chapter 7, so turn to chapter 7, uh, he gives kind of a self-portrait, and it's actually very dark. So I'm going to read just a, three verses, Romans 7, verse 18, For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this is, I keep on doing. And then finally, verse 24 of Romans 7, What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? So the question I want you to talk about in your group is, okay, Paul talks about the good news in Romans 4 and 5 of Christ's grace, God's love, and then victory in Christ in Romans 6. We're dead to sin, we're alive to Christ, to the resurrection. Why this dark section? I can't, I don't do the good I'm supposed to do. What a wretched man who will deliver me. What's going on here? Discuss this, and then hopefully Sunday I can, uh, I can unpack that for you. All right? Have a good study. Thanks for being with me. Okay.